So we've been talking a lot in class about bond polarity, the equal or unequal distributions of electrons in a shared bond. This flow chart is talking about molecule polarity. So just a little reminder that something is going to be ionic if it's made up of a combination of a metal with a nonmetal. What we're going to be looking at are covalent molecules for this flow chart. So in that covalent molecule, um, those guys are usually made up of nonmetals only, but sometimes you might get metalloids that sneak in there to make a covalent compound. So we're going to be looking at those covalent ones if those covalent molecules made up of nonmetals only or metalloids with nonmetals, um, if they have an overall unequal distribution of electrons throughout the molecule or a general, generally equal distribution of electrons throughout the molecule. So the first thing you're going to ask yourself is, does the substance have lone pairs on the central atom? If there are lone pairs on the central atom, then your molecule is going to be polar. An example that we've seen of that is water because what the lone pairs do is it causes these weird, funny angles uh, throughout your molecule. So you have uh, like the electrons generally headed towards that O in an upward direction. Lone pairs on the central atom cause bends and um, no straight lines anymore when we have those uh, lone pairs on the central atom. And because there are no straight lines, those funny angles mean that our polar bonds that might happen in a molecule have no way of canceling out. So if you see lone pairs on the central atom of your molecule, you should rejoice and go, yes, it's polar. Okay, I don't have to go through the rest of this flow chart. Now, what about if there aren't lone pairs on the central atom? Then you'd ask yourself, does it have all nonpolar bonds? When I look at that electronegativity chart, and I find the electronegativity difference, do they all fall in that 0 to 0 0.4 range? If every single bond in your molecule falls into that 0 to 0 0.4 electronegativity difference, and there's no lone pairs on your central atom, then the molecule is going to be nonpolar overall. So just a common example that you might see, methane, CH4, when we look at that carbon, there are no lone pairs on the central atom, which is what makes us go this way. And then when we look at the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen, it's 0.4. And so, yes, all made up of nonpolar bonds, so that makes the molecule CH4 nonpolar. What about if you have some polar bonds in your picture? So at least one bond in your picture falls in the 0.5 and up electronegativity difference range. What you're going to look and see is, does everything around the central atom match? Is it 100% symmetrical? Um, so when you're looking at that, if everything matches, then even if you have polar bonds, the polar bonds would cancel out. So just as an example, if we had the molecule CCl4, when we look at the electronegativity differences between C and Cl, if I go find those numbers back up here at the top, uh, carbons value 2.5, chlorines is 3. So there's a difference of 0.5. And so every single bond in my CCl4 is a polar bond. But all the atoms around that carbon all match. So even though chlorine pulls harder on the electrons than carbon does, we have a situation where all the polar bonds would cancel out because the left pull cancels out the right pull and the top pull bottom, cancels out the bottom pull, equal pulls in all four directions means overall we have a nonpolar situation. Even though the bonds themselves are polar, the polar bonds cancel because 
the poles are the same in all directions. But what if we have a situation where not everything matches? So what if I drew a very similar looking structure, but I replace one of those chlorines with a fluorine instead? Well, when you compare the uh, values of chlorine versus fluorine, fluorine can pull harder on the electrons with its higher electronegativity. It attracts them better than chlorine does. So in that top to bottom, the fluorine really pulls up and the chlorine pulls down a little bit. We'd have an unequal distribution of where those electrons might end up. And so it makes it polar overall. What about molecules where you don't have a central atom? Then what? Uh, and it says use some previous guidelines about carbon, hydrogen, oxygen ratios. Well, if you have lots of carbon and hydrogen in your picture, the carbon hydrogen electronegativity difference is 0.4. It falls in that nonpolar range. So if you draw your structure and you see lots of nonpolar bonds, then your structure is probably going to be nonpolar overall. Now, if you look at your carbon oxygen numbers and you notice that the number of carbons in your molecule is approximately equal to the number of oxygens, it doesn't have to be an exact match. So maybe, I don't know, five carbons and six oxygens, or it could match exactly six carbon, six oxygens. If those numbers are approximately equal, that means that we have a lot of carbon oxygen bonds in our molecule. And if you have lots of carbon oxygen polar bonds in your structure, then it's probably gonna act more polar overall. So these are some good guidelines to look at if you don't have a central atom. A lot of times it'll fall into one of those two categories. Or what if you have a situation where you have two atoms bonded to one another? Do the two bonded atoms match? So what if you had oxygen bonded to itself? Well, that's as nonpolar as you can get because when we find the electronegativity difference between oxygen versus oxygen, when you look at its value on the chart, you subtract oxygens, I think it's 3.5 for oxygen. Yeah, you take oxygens 3.5 and we would do 3.5 minus 3.5. That's as nonpolar as you can get an electronegativity difference of zero. They pull on their electrons with equal strength, and so there's no winner in that electron tug of war. But if the two bonded atoms do not match, if it was oxygen, let's say double bonded to sulfur, well, oxygen can pull harder on those electrons than the sulfur can. When you compare electronegativity values, our electrons would generally be headed in one direction. We'd have an imbalance of our electrons, so that would make that molecule polar.